1. New Jeans should perform as 4 instead of having that weird bunny replacing Hyun, New Jeans' decision to replace injured member Hyun with a backup dancer with a bunny mask during their supernatural promotions has left me scratching my head, why not just adapt the choreography for 4 members? New Jeans managed just fine during How Sweet and Bubblegum without Hyun, so why having this bunny masked backup dancer now? Some fans are cooing about how sweet it is to have a symbol to remember Hyun but replacing a core member with a random person doesn't exactly scream we cherish our members, it's more like, eh, let's slap a bunny mask on someone and call it a day, it's straight up lazy. Remember when G-Idol's Yuchi missed a concert due to scheduling conflicts, they replaced her with a dancer, and I wasn't thrilled then either, why not redistribute her parts among the other G-Idol members? But new jeans have taken it up a notch, no shade to the backup dancer but instead of reminding fans of Hyun, it's distracting from the rest of the group. 2. Itzy are lip-syncing most of their tour concerts. Why have a concert if you're going to lip-sync the whole time? It's a question that echoes through the minds of fans who attend concerts, only to find their faves mouthing words to pre-recorded tracks. Itzy are currently on tour, but they sadly lip-sync most of their shows. I get it, Itzy's choreography is next level, but we don't show up to a concert to watch a dance routine. We want to hear raw vocals for goodness sake. My friend recently attended a Nitsi concert in Fairfax, and her verdict? Disappointment. She recounted how the girls didn't sing any of their songs live, or if they did, you could barely hear them. Even when they weren't dancing, the mics remained silent. Instead, they'd occasionally lift the mic to hype up the crowd. She even showed me the video she recorded and it was obvious. I had a similar experience when I attended Itsy's concept in Seattle. The lip-syncing was so rampant that it felt like a playback marathon. Solo stages were the worst offenders, Cheryong, would go through entire verses without the mic anywhere near her face, yet the backtrack stayed the same, sounding identical to when she did have the mic next to her mouth, I get that idols are human, they're performing for 2-3 to three hours, only having breaks during solo performances, but Itzy literally lipsens the whole show, I tried to give them the benefits of the doubt, but the fan cams online from their other concerts show the same problems. Their fans use their choreos as an excuse but I can't take them seriously. Just last night, I went to AT's Mawazin performance in Morocco, and they absolutely crushed it. Performing live while executing crazy choreo, they absolutely nailed it from start to finish. Even with the hot night weather, AT's gave it their all, and it showed in their powerful vocals. The live band was a game changer, elevating the entire experience. Having them perform with a live band at such a major festival was a brilliant move. I've seen ATs live multiple times and knew what to expect, but seeing them in my home country Morocco was something special, they made it worth every moment. 3. Billboard has criticized SM for Sung Han's hiatus, shortly after Rise's debut, SM sent Sung Han on hiatus after pre-debut pictures of him were leaked, these photos showed him kissing an unidentified woman and smoking a cigarette, Sung Han has been on hiatus for 7 months now, but recently, Billboard published an article calling out SM for their handling of Sung Han's situation. There have been no updates or news about his position in the group during this time. The article also discussed the reasons behind Sung Han's hiatus and highlighted how his name has been erased from all social media since then. It's no secret that SM has a penchant for maintaining radio silence when it comes to controversies. But when a major Western media outlet like Billboard calls you out, you can't just shrug it off. Sung Han's situation is baffling. He's been on hiatus for seven months, longer than his actual time with Rise. What did he do to warrant this? It's not like he set the world on fire or revealed the secret recipe for KFC chicken. It's just dating and smoking. SM markets rise as Gen Z friendly, yet they're treating Sung Han like a radioactive potato. Oops, he dated someone. Quick, put him in hiatus. It's like they're stuck in a time warp where teenage romance is a cardinal sin. Meanwhile, fans are chanting rise is seven and demanding answers. So SM, it's decision time. Sung Han deserves clarity and the other RISE members deserve stability, remember Wavy's Lucas? We don't want to repeat history, I think SM caved to online bullying from Korean fans but they can't admit it, fearing criticism from Sung Han's international fans, his fandom spent a lot of money to keep his name in front of people's faces, billboards, buses, taxis, airplane tickets, etc., SM's silence is likely a way to avoid the outrage of these fans. 4. Fans need to stop blindly believing accusations, when an allegation surfaces, Fans often invoke the we believe the victim mentality, and we should empathize with victims, but blind belief without scrutiny is problematic, after all, we don't truly know either party, the idol or the accuser, the recent movement has encouraged people to prioritize victims' voices and experiences, while this is crucial for addressing real injustices, it can sometimes lead to a rush to judgment, it's essential, to remember that believing the victim doesn't automatically mean disbelieving the accused, 
both sides deserve a fair investigation, the justice system wisely employs innocent until proven guilty, yet some fans toss that principle out the window the moment a scandal arises, especially if they harbor pre-existing grudges against the idol, leading them to blindly accept any negative information in this digital age, where information spreads like wildfire, there's a tendency to react swiftly. Without pausing for reflection, social media is built on misinformation, half-truths, fabricated evidence, fake texts, Photoshop and outright lies, when accusations surface, we're bombarded with screenshots, cryptic tweets, blurry photos, and sadly, many fans are lazy to fact-check and believe everything they see on the internet, they fiercely defend their idols, often at the expense of others, cancel culture thrives here. Fans skip the investigation phase altogether, why bother waiting for the police? They've already cast their verdict, the accused idol? Guilty, the accuser? Definitely a victim. Who cares if the idol's innocent? Their collateral damage in the war for moral superiority. 5. SM's decision to release better things as a single for Espa left me scratching my head. While the music video and visuals were beautiful, the song itself falls short. Where's the signature Espa vibe? The group has carved out a distinctive sound, blending futuristic elements with catchy hooks. But better things felt like it wandered into the wrong playlist. It lacks that spark, that flavor we've come to expect. I had the same problem with their first English single Life's Too Short. The worst thing about Better Things is the lyrics. At first listen, it seems like a love song, but then it veers off into Espa's haters and fans. Lines like Espa big girls making money, and you can only see. Me at our sold out shows throw me off. It's like they're trying to juggle too many themes at once, leaving us with a lyrical mess. And don't get me started on the tongue twisting delivery. It's like they're speed reading a grocery list. The song also gets stuck in a loop. Especially at the finish, the composer tried to make it deep, but it just feels flat with all the repetitiveness, it's all the same one note over and over. 6. What truly determines trainees' fate in survival shows? Is it raw talent, charisma, or just a killer jawline? The aesthetics dilemma reveals that these shows often resemble a beauty pageant more than a talent showdown, with audiences casting votes based on first impressions rather than vocal skills or dancing, genuine vocalists and rappers rarely make the cut because the voting process prioritizes aesthetics over artistry. Meanwhile, Social media serves as the modern coliseum where fans dissect every pixel of their favorite trainees' Instagram posts, the selection process, akin to a Tinder swipe-off, raises questions about whether the emphasis on looks overshadows genuine talent, the final lineup often features trainees with perfect symmetry, leaving little room for true talents, which makes you wonder, what the heck those judges are doing there. If the fans only focus on aesthetics, Shouldn't the judges have more influence to select skilled trainees that deserve to debut? But I guess the judges are there just to look pretty. 7. I've songs aren't riding solely on Won Young's coattails. It's no secret that Won Young is the most popular fourth-gen idol, and she has undoubtedly drawn attention to I've, alongside Yujin. But let's not reduce their success to a solo act. The sonic magic of I've song stands on its own, with tracks that are rich, layered and addictive, featuring top-notch production quality and catchy melodies. Won Young and Yujin's presence adds intrigue, but it's the music, with its hooks, bridges and harmonies that made their songs chart well. We've seen so many former members of popular survival shows stumble when they debut again, but not I've. Starship managed to fully utilize Won Young's popularity, but they have crafted a holistic group image that balances individual talents with collective synergy, while Won Young and Yujin may get the more screen time, it's not at the expense of the other members who also get their moments to shine. Music is subjective, and while some might call I've songs average, the Korean public's positive reception tells a different story. With their tracks climbing the charts, Won Yang's popularity certainly jump-started I've's engine, but it's not a one-woman show. 8. Albums should follow a consistent theme. When an album maintains a cohesive concept, production style, and lyrical depth, it feels like a complete artistic journey. While experimentation is essential for growth, some groups veer too far from their central concept with each song telling a different story, having too many concepts, or including random ballads for no reason. Finding albums that qualify as true masterpieces can be like searching for a needle in a haystack. Many fall short due to inconsistency. Exceptional albums, however, weave a narrative. Each track contributes to the overarching story, creating a harmonious whole. It's like reading a novel where every chapter matters. A prime example of this is Unlock My World by From Is Nine. The title track Stellar Production sets the tone, and the other songs follow suit without feeling repetitive. Lyrics matter too, when they align with the album's message. It's like finding the missing puzzle piece, suddenly, everything clicks. Other examples include Twice Eyes Wide Open, J-Hope's Jacks in the Box, and Brave Girls Thank You. I personally value consistency. A remarkable album should be a cohesive package. It's not just about the banger title track. 
it's about the entire playlist flowing seamlessly, top-tier production, meaningful lyrics, and thematic coherence, they're the ingredients for a no-skip album.